I'm Jonathan Buchanan, and in this video, we're going to add to our collection of beat making videos. We've got a whole playlist of these because we've actually covered all kinds of beat creation in lots of episodes through the channel. We have programmed our first beat. We've looked at Drum Machine Designer extensively. We've looked at Drum Kit Designer. We've looked at Beat Replacement. And we're going to add to our kind of arsenal of beat making resources right now by creating a little scratch kit of sounds. What do I mean? Well, look, the mic is all plugged in and ready to go. Sometimes a really nice way of being able to add drum sounds and rhythms to the parts that you program for the instruments within Logic is just to record some sounds and see where they take you, whether you go on to process those or just simply just chop them up and put them in alongside some other beats. So to start with, what I'm going to do is to record some sounds. Now, I'm not too precious about the way that these are going to sound. What I'm going to do is to keep my speakers on. I've muted the audio track onto which I'm going to be recording because all of the sounds that I'm going to record are going to be pretty short and I just want a little kind of smorgasbord of sonic ideas that I can put in alongside some beats that I'm already thinking about for this track. So all I'm going to do is to press record and then make some noise. Okay, so we've got some recordings. Now then, let's have a look and see exactly what we've got. I'm going to un uh, sort of disarm the record channel and then we can unmute it and hopefully now we won't get any feedback. Okay, if you're worried about that, by the way, you can just simply completely disarm the input stage and now the microphone isn't listening anymore. Obviously, you can disconnect it too, but it could be that you want to make more recordings. Okay, so what I've got now is a chance to see exactly what I've done. And of course, because the hand claps loud and the little moment towards the end is very quiet, there's going to be a massive volume range in the differences between these sounds. Let's just have a listen to how they sound right now. Okay, sure enough, it's a lot quieter. Now then, what I can do is I can simply just chop this file up and basically reassign all of these into a drum uh, machine designer empty kit. And we are gonna do those. We are gonna do exactly that. But before we do that, we're going to look at another quite neat feature which was introduced with 10.7.5, which was the game tool. Now what this allows me to do is to apply a region gain level to all of the regions that I want to work with. I think over here somewhere is the sound towards the end. And obviously this is the sound of me putting my drumstick down. So I'm just gonna get rid of that region. I don't think we need it. And then what we can do is to come through to the gain tool, which is down here at the bottom, and we can simply apply a gain offset. And you can see that when I do this, I'm not adjusting volume. I'm effectively kind of almost like resampling the sound. You can see that the waveform behind it isn't just being boosted in terms of volume. You can see that actually the shape of it is changing. So what I'm going to do is just sort of use my eyes to just try and even out some of the gains for all of the different regions that I've recorded, including this one towards the end, which I think is going to be messy because um, it requires a lot of volume boost, but also um, because um, it's got a, a sort of a relatively high noise floor, the, the sound around that sound um, in itself, I think is going to be um, uh, a little different. So having gain offsetted these individual regions, I'm going to come back to the beginning and listen to them again. Okay, I can still be louder. Okay, so what we've now got is a series of individual sounds. Now, what I've done on the next kit, uh, the next track down is to set up a drum machine designer. And actually I have put a compressor on it as well, just waiting for us. We'll need to adjust its settings, but nevertheless, I'm gonna just compress these sounds right out of the box. But if I open up drum machine designer, what I can see is that nothing is currently assigned into these individual slots. So what I can do is I can either one at a time, simply move these sounds onto 
their individual slots if I want to, or I can grab a whole bunch of them at once and I can move them down into these slots. And because they are separate regions, they come in as separate pads. And effectively what happens very quickly, and we've seen this before, is that the pads get resampled so that effectively each of these individual sounds is assigned to each one. Now, it's brought in the names of those regions as well, which have got the slightly less than useful uh, untitled underscore one hashtag 03.1 title, but that's all right. We can rename them if we want to. So what I can see is that the first sound is on C1, and there it is. It's my clap sound, which is over here. But I can also hear very clearly there's a long gap before that sound actually plays. So what I'm going to do is to select this pad and I am going to rename it, which I can do really easily by just double clicking on its name and renaming it here. And then what I can do is I can shuttle the start point along to the beginning of this clap sound, which is sort of automatically snapping. And now it's going to play from the beginning. Now at the moment, this sample is playing in what's called one shot mode. If I click it, the entire sample plays, including all of the sort of silence at the end. A nice little sort of vinyl-y rustle there, which I actually really like, which I'm going to sort of keep in. It could be that it just totally gets lost when we start putting other sounds around it. But one of the things about working this way is that you'll find that some of the sounds that you record have just got little noises in them that suddenly just make them your own and are a bit more interesting. So I'm going to not shave the end of that sound off completely. What I'm going to do is move on to the next sound, which is going to be here. I don't know which one this is. Right, so this is the first of my finger snaps. So I'm going to just call it that. Um, so I'm just going to call it snap one. Again, what I can do is to adjust the start point and I'm in good shape. Now it's worth bearing in mind, if I hadn't used the um, gain tool to change the volume or the kind of uh, the, uh, the sort of input stage, if you like, of each of these individual sounds, it could be that I'd be wanting to make volume adjustments within Drum Machine Designer and I can do that too. If I come to the quick sampler detail page, which is here, this one pad has got its volume control here. So if I wanted to give it a boost, I could do that right here. I don't need to for this sound. All of these noises have got this kind of little uh, sort of noise artifact afterwards. This one I'm going to make nice and punchy, so I'm going to move the end point along as well. And if I want to, I can come into what's called classic mode instead, which means that rather than playing the entire sample, it will only play the bit while I hold the note down. Now, for most drum sounds, most of the time we do want one shot samples. We want the whole of the sound to play. But if I was recording something else or I'd recorded a bit of a synth stab and I wanted to be able to control how long it was, classic mode gives you an opportunity to, yeah, sort of re trigger sounds and kind of a slightly more old school way if you like. So I can just go through each of these sounds sequentially. The next sound is going to be on D1. So this is my little sort of snap roll. I'm a little proud of that one, I've got to be honest. I'm going to just get rid of uh, the bits that I don't need. So I'm going to just call this snap roll. Sounds like something you might have for lunch. Okay, so there we are. That's in good shape. Let's come on to the next one. Right, so this is our kind of coffee cup. Again, I'm just going to adjust the start point. I can see that that's kind of snapping into the position where I want it to. It's really easy to make that adjustment. And again, uh, we'll just do that. So this is a kind of, I'll just call that cup and so on and so forth. That's there. Okay, so this is a sort of double tap for the um, cup. And again, I'll just adjust ends there as well. And then we've got our last one, which is here. Okay, I really like the end of this too. That's great. Okay, I'm going to keep the length of that in and I'm going to turn up its volume. Now, this is a perfect sound for use in classic mode. If I just want to use the beginning of the sound, I can come off it. As soon as I'm done. But what I can also do is to have the sound continue all the way through to the end. And if I want that end section to fade out, I can do that too using the fade tool. So that it doesn't just stop abruptly. So what I've now got, I don't know what to call that sound. I'm going to just call it sort of brush, I guess. Sort of what it is. What I've now got is a little sort of collection of sounds which I could start building some rhythms around. So let's do that next. 
I'm going to open up a pattern region editor for my drum machine designer kit, which is going to be here. And with any luck, because I've labeled the pads, sure enough, now what I get is a chance to actually see the names that I've applied to those regions, uh, to those tracks, so that effectively I don't have to remember what they were. So what I'm gonna do is put a little loop around bar one, and what we'll do is just make a little pattern. Yeah, let's try that at the beginning. And actually what I'm gonna do is come back here for a moment and just for now, I'm gonna put that back into one shot mode so we get all of that sound. Okay, let's have a listen to that rhythm. Now I'm regretting the compressor, which is bonkers loud. Okay, let's just put it in with some other beats too and see how that's beginning to sound. Now I've said it before, if you're not enjoying that, you're watching the wrong channel. Okay, so what we've got here is just a little collection of sounds that we've recorded in a really lo-fi way. We've applied a little bit of gain control, we've imported them into um, our track, and of course, at the moment, these original sounds are still running live, which is why we're getting this really nice little fill at the end of bar four, which again, totally unintentional, is still just running live, and as a result, we get this kind of nice little roll effect towards the end. And the great thing about plugging in microphones and making recordings is that the unexpected always happens. Something comes along which you weren't expecting and it just adds a new flavor. And so whether or not you want to program these sorts of beats or something totally different, just a little bit of yourself and something that you've recorded yourself can often make a really big difference in terms of the uniqueness of your drum programming.